by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Anbiya wa al-Mursaleen. Amma ba'd fa'audhu billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah. As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Jallah. Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nur Allah. My dear viewers of Madhani Channel, the whole point, the objective of Rise and Shine is to give you a little information in the morning, not to bombard you with so much, no. To keep it small, to keep it brief, sort of. To have many segments, to speak about various things, my dear viewers of Mandani channel. And Alhamdulillah, ultimately, uh, for us to learn about our deen, for us to learn about our religion, Alhamdulillah. And yes, it's all about positivity. It's all about being positive, being happy. The anxiety we may have been suffering from or may be suffering from at this moment in time um, any sort of depression may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from it inshallah and to you know try to put everything negative to a side and inclusive within these negative things are also sins for us to try to refrain from sins, inshallah, because my dear viewers of the channel, really, the key to, whether you call it the key to success, the key to happiness, the key to contentment, uh, the key to all goodness, alhamdulillah, is following the sharia, ah, is going by the, and acting upon the uh, commandments of the Quran and the sunnahs of Rasulullah, sallallahu ta'ala, alihi wa ala alihi, really. A person who truly acts upon the deen can never be depressed. A person who truly acts upon the religion, can, he will always be satisfied. Because then they'll be satisfied with even the little, the small amounts, the small things in life. Alhamdulillah, this is enough to satisfy. Why? Because hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his love is enough for us. This is how it truly should be. This is truly how we should be. Allahu Akbar. My dear viewers of Mandani channel, Alhamdulillah, Azza uh, You are watching Rise and Shine. Every single day we have a new topic. Sometimes topics repeated, yes. But the material, the information, Alhamdulillah, Azza majority of the times is something new, my dear viewers. As well as this, we have our daily segments, whether that be the daily reminder. A hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now there are two things, my dear viewers. There's one day Quran. Remember, this is what our... Uh, religion, our deen is based on the Quran, number one, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Al Quran al Kareem, that which we possibly have in our own homes too, Al Quran. This, my dear viewers, firstly, Al Quran, the Quran, and secondly, my dear viewers, the Sunnah, the, or the Sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, this is the Ahadish, the beautiful the beautiful sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It could be his beautiful characteristics about him, his actions, his a'mal, the a'mal of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Or it could even be those things which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa approved of. These are considered the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And then, yes, the companions too. That of the companions, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate their ranks even further and forgive us for their sake. This is what our deen is, my dear viewers. The Quran, the Sunnah, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do you love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? There's another hadith shreep. Man ahabba sunnati faqad ahabba ni. That he who loves my Sunnah loves me. So how do you love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? By having love for his sunnah. What does it mean by having love for his sunnah? When you love something, you wish to adopt it. 
when it's an action, he loved performing an action. Some people will say, I love playing football. If they love playing football and they never play, then you think, how do you love playing football? Some would say, I love doing this. If they never do it, they don't, do they really love it? If we love the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa how can we show that we love the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The only way, my dear viewers, is by acting upon the sunnahs. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would sleep in a particular position. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would awaken, he would, or the night prayers which he would read, he would spend his nights in worship, he would regularly fast. The Prophet ﷺ would remain hungry. The Prophet ﷺ would always, no doubt, he was, he was a prophet, he was perfect, but he would control what he would say. He would always do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he would eat or drink, he would sit and eat and drink. He would do it with his right hand, etc., etc., my dear viewers. The sunnahs of Rasulullah I cannot say I love an action and not do it, no. For me to love an action, it means that I do that action. If I say I love the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and don't do them, then that's hypocrisy, isn't it? It's a fake claim. No. So love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love for Rasulullah. How do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By acting upon the sunnahs. How do you love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa By acting upon the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And as well as this, my dear of Mother Nation, uh, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Every single, now please ponder over these words, every single, firstly what is a companion? That individual who has met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not just seen physically, why? Because some may have been blind, it may have been that some were not able to see. You may have heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. may have been in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. that individual who has met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he believes in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he passes away. When he leaves this world for the eternal abode, he passes away on Islam. With Iman. Such a person is a companion. And every single, again as I said my words, every single companion... Every single companion who believes that that person who believes in the Prophet ﷺ, um, he met the Prophet ﷺ and he passed away like this. It doesn't matter what they did before they accepted Islam, no. Why? Because uh, Alhamdulillah, and this is the beauty of Islam, Alhamdulillah, that Islam, my dear views of Islam, our deen, our religion, when a person embraces Islam, when a person initially, they're not Muslims, but then they embrace Islam, they become Muslims, they accept Islam, then this automatically removes and wipes all the sins that have been, that have been performed throughout their life. It wipes them all away. It gives them a clean slate, as we would say, when they embrace Islam. So the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa before they accepted Islam, it doesn't matter what they did. But alhamdulillah, the companions, when they accept Islam and views, every single companion, even if one became a Muslim for only a moment and then he passed away immediately, every single companion of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is one thing, jannati as you would say. They have been promised success and eternal happiness by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have been, the jannah has been prepared for them. Jannah has been prepared for them. And they are the greatest of people. They are the greatest of people. So these are the people we must love. We must love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must love the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear viewers of Madani Channel, how did I get to this? Yes, as I was saying, that we follow the Quran, the sunnahs. Alhamdulillah, we always begin with the recitation of the glorious Quran. And midway, we also have a hadith shrib, which is from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So every day we have, as well as our daily reminder, we have a daily hadith shrib. Davies also, please do remember that whilst the Quran is being recited, then it is our job to give our full attention 
to the recitation of the Quran. But if it was, let's begin. There's also the translation of the glorious Quran along with it, inshallah, which we shall be listening to. Please make good intentions too, because the more good intentions you make, the more reward you shall gain, inshallah. Let's listen to the glorious uh, verses of the Holy Quran. Sallu ala al Habib, Sallallahu Taala ala Muhammad, Sallallahu Taala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Main Allah Taala ki panah mein aata hoon, shaytan e mardud se. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah ke naam se shuru. جو نہایت مہربان رحم والا یا ایوہا الذین آمنوا انما المشرکون نجس فلا يقرب المسجد الحرام بعد عامهم هذا ایمان والو مشرک نرے یعنی بالکل ناپاک ہیں تو اس برس کے بعد وہ مسجد حرام کے پاس نہ آنے پائیں وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ عَيْلَةً فَسَوْفَ يُغْنِيكُمُ اللَّهُ مِن فَضْلِهِ إِن شَاءَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ اور اگر تمہیں محتاجی کا ڈر ہے تو عن قریب اللہ تمہیں دولت مند کر دے گا اپنے فضل سے اگر چاہے بے شک اللہ علم و حکمت والا ہے قاتل الذین لا يؤمنون باللہ ولا باليوم الاخر ولا يحرمون ما حرم اللہ ورسوله لڑو ان سے جو ایمان نہیں لاتے اللہ پر اور قیامت پر اور حرام نہیں مانتے اس چیز کو جس کو حرام کیا اللہ اور اس کے رسول نے وَلَا يَدِينُونَ دِينَ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ حَتَّى يُعْطُوا الْجِزِيَةَ عَنْ يَدِينُ وَهُمْ صَغِرُونَ اور سچے دین کتابیں نہیں ہوتے یعنی وہ جو کتاب دیئے گئے جب تک اپنے ہاتھ سے جزیہ نہ دیں زلیل ہو کر وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُسَيْرٌ ابْنُ اللَّهِ وَقَالَتِ النَّصْقَرَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ اللَّهِ اور یہودی بولے عزیر اللہ کا بیٹا ہے اور نصرانی بولے مسیح اللہ کا بیٹا ہے ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ يُضَاهِئُونَ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِن قَبْلِ قَاتَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ أَنَّا يُؤْفَكُونَ یہ باتیں وہ اپنے موں سے بکتے ہیں اگلے کافروں کسی بات بناتے ہیں اللہ انہیں مارے کہاں آندھے جاتے ہیں اتخذوا احبارهم ورحبانهم اربابا من دون اللہ والمسیح ابن مریم انہوں نے اپنے پادریوں اور جوگیوں کو اللہ کے سوا خدا بنا دیا اور مسیح ابن مریم کو وما امروا الا لیعبدوا اور انہیں حکم نہ تھا مگر یہ کہ ایک اللہ کو پوجھیں اس کے سوا کسی کی بندگی نہیں اسے باقی ہے ان کے شرک سے یریدون این یطفیو نور اللہ بی افواہہم و یعب اللہ الا چاہتے ہیں کہ اللہ کا نور اپنے موں سے بجھا دیں اور اللہ نہ مانے گا 
मगर अपने नूर का पूरा करना पड़े यानी अगर चे बुरा माने काफिर वही है जिसने अपना रसूल हिदायत और सच्चे दीन के साथ भेजा कि उसे सब दीनों पर गालिब करे पड़े बुरा माने मुशरक phenomenal alhamdulillah it really is we just have to open it and recite it and especially when um especially when you are reciting it whilst maybe nobody else is listening my whilst maybe nobody else is watching when you're on your own in secrecy you recite the quran it may be the time of fajr salah you wake up early morning you wake up early morning my dear viewers you have um read your fajr salah maybe even before you read fajr salah you open the glorious quran and you read the glorious quran you read it after obviously having offered ablution etc but when you do is and you recite it in the middle of the night there's just so much more um you enjoy it so much more really you enjoy it so much and you think wow you know this is the quran they we was we should have a close may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even grant me um a very close you can say bond with the glorious quran uh, grant me more love grant us all the viewers more love for the quran to recite the quran regularly inshallah wa azza wa ta'ala grant us the ability to regularly recite the glorious quran and not only just have it you know either for sure or just placed in um one of our rooms at home allah akbar may we was rest hopefully please try to make this intention Uh, let's try to recite the Quran even if it's five minutes a day, even and this I'll say at least five minutes a day. But you just give it five minutes, automatically you'll increase that yourself. But at least give it five minutes a day, five minutes a day, my dear viewers, when you recite the Quran. Or if you do have the commentary along with the Quran, then just write, recite three verses, three verses of the Quran in Arabic, and then the English translation as well as the commentary. Allahu Akbar and you will love it you will enjoy it I'll promise you you just do a minimum of 3 automatically you will do more automatically you yourself will begin to read more and sometimes there'll be a time honestly where you'll think oh wow I just want to what what's happening next what comes next I want to read the whole thing and if some are really impatient then they'll miss the arabic and they'll just read the rest of the commentary they'll just read on and on and on and on that's because they like, want to get over that's how exciting alhamdulillah that's how interesting it truly is my dear viewers uh, but it just takes us to take the first step doesn't it it's us that has to take the first step and this is by you know opening the glorious quran um trying to read a minimum of three verses inshallah wa azzajal regularly try to do this try to do this daily my dear viewers um, inshallah and no doubt there will be uh, more blessings and more baraka uh, in our lives inshallah wa azzajal now we have our daily question and um, the way this um the question has been worded it would be difficult to not find the correct answer the question my dear viewers is for how many years did the second khalifa of islam hazrat sayyiduna umar ibn khattab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu for how many years did he rule as the khalifa of islam So the first Khalifa of Islam was Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu the greatest of people after the prophets and messengers Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu the second Khalifa of Islam is Hazrat Umar Farooq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu now Hazrat Umar Farooq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu the second Khalifa of Islam 
for how many years approximately did he rule as the uh, Khalifa, as the Caliph? And there are four options. Option number one, was it three years? Option number two, was it five years? Option number three, was it seven years? Option number four, was it 10 years approximately? Which is the correct answer? Please do send in your answers. My dear viewers of the Day channel, Alhamdulillah, today we have a beautiful topic, a important topic. A very, very important topic. But to find out what that is, you'll have to stick with us. Let's first move on to the Naad Sharif, the praise of the greatest of all mankind, the peace of our hearts and our minds, the most generous and kind, the last and final prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. But if it was, let's listen to the Naad Sharif. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Mehman Madine wale da, 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 Mehman Madine wale da. Koi kismat wala banda hai, Mehman Madine wale da, Honda. Shabakate Sultan Madine Valeda, Kismat Vala Bada, Mehman Madine Valeda, Honda Ikaram Kushbakate Sultan Madine Valeda, Musar Chamandi, which renu Tamilandi, Bulbulusar Chamandi, which renu. Uh, the question of the day was is um, which number of how many years approximately did the second Khalifa of Islam the second Khalifa, my dear viewers, you should all, you should know every, you should know at least the names of the four Khulafa. You should know the names of the four, the Khulafa Rashidun, minimum, at least, 
at least medievals. So yes, and many prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, the last and final prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He left behind the Khulafai Rashidun who led, who led the Ummah for the next 30 years, for the next 30 years after his apparent demise. And there were four individuals specifically, and yes, you mentioned five. Famously, the Khulafai Arba'ah. So, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, the great Hazrat Abu Bakr, the friend and beloved of Rasulullah, the helper, the great companion of Rasulullah, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. This is one name you should know Hazrat Abu Bakr. Hazrat Abu Bakr. For those that may be new to it, then learn it now. Hazrat Abu Bakr and Siddiq is a title he was given. So Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq the first Khalifa of Islam. The second Khalifa of Islam, Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab or Umar Farooq. Farooq is the title given. His name was Umar, the son of Khattab. Umar ibn Khattab. The third Khalifa of Islam. Hazrat Uthman, let's just go with Uthman Ghani. Hazrat Uthman Ghani, who's known as Ghani, meaning the rich. Hazrat Uthman the rich, Hazrat Uthman Ghani, the fourth Khalifa of Islam. The fourth Khalifa of Islam was Hazrat Ali Al Murtada, Karam Allahu Wajhahu Kareem, or Ridilahu Talanhu. So four Khulafa Madivus, the four Caliphs, the first Caliph, the first Khalifa, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq And another thing, my dear viewers, is whenever we mention the names, especially the prophets, but also the companions, the great old Ya, we shouldn't just say them as, oh yeah, Abu Bakr. No, we shouldn't say it like this. We should have some respect. If you were to say, and this is what I said to one person, one person, he, he said the name of a companion. And he just said that that's fine. It's not like his his fault. He possibly doesn't know. He's not been you know in an environment where he learns, etc. Um, but he said the name. He said just the name. Let's just say, for example, Abu Bakr. Oh yeah, uh, Abu Bakr. And now the question to be asked to that person is, who says this? Is tell me if you were to mention your father's name. First, you would even mention them by name. If you were to, how would you mention them? You'll say, my beloved father, my honorable father. Or, you know, sahib. If you mention the name, if it's, let's just say, your uncle. For father, you'll just say father. You wouldn't really say the name. But if you're mentioning your uncle, you would have some sort of title coming along with it. Or at least a sahib. Something like this. To show that, yes, they're elderly and you respect them. Now, no matter how great they are, no matter how great any of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, none of them are as great as the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa So when we say the names of the companions, we should speak their names with respect. We should say things like Sayyiduna or Hazrat. Hazrat is another way. Hazrat. Hazrat Abu Bakr. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr. Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. We should also say, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah ta'ala be pleased with them. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them, as He has told us within the Quran. So, things that we should say in a way of respect. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Umar, not to say, oh yeah, Umar, he was, he was sick. Yes, mashallah, he was on another level, no doubt, my dear viewers. But when we say the name, we should say, yes, and Hazrat Umar. You should say, Hazrat Uthman. This is minimum. Minimum. Or you can say, Sayyiduna. They are our masters, no doubt about it. So an easy way is Hazrat. This is something which everybody would know. So Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Or even just Hazrat Abu Bakr, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The second Khalifa. Hazrat Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. These four companions, 
minimum we should know the names of these four companions. This is not our topic today. But my dear viewers, please learn the names of these four companions. Honestly, please, please, please learn the names of these four companions of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala So I'll say them once more only, inshallah. But hopefully, may Allah ta'ala grant me the ability to keep saying them. Alhamdulillah, just by mentioning the names, uh, inshallah, we shall be not gaining barakah, inshallah, azza jal. So Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Umar Farooq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Uthman Ghani, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Ali Al-Murtada, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Four great companions of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Four names we should have closely uh, attached to us, inshallah, four people we need to learn about, inshallah. Uh, why was I speaking about this? Because the question relates to the second Khalifa of Islam. So when I said the names, that was in order of greatness, in order of uh, leadership. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, he's the greatest, and he was the first leader, he was the first Khalifa. Hazrat Umar was the greatest after Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. He was the second Khalifa. Hazrat Osman, he was the greatest after the first two. And he was the third Khalifa. And the fourth Khalifa, Hazrat Ali, who after the first three mentioned, he was the greatest of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. But the question of the day is, how many years did the second Khalifa of Islam, Hazrat Umar Farooq, for how many years, my dear viewers of Nishal, uh, did he rule as the Caliph? Today's topic, my dear viewers of Nishal, is time. Yes, inshallah, today we shall be speaking about time, the value of time, the importance of time. Right now, we have so much time on our hands. We have so much time on our hands because we would normally have to wake up very early. First thing we do, breakfast, etc. First thing, we're out of the door, going to school, going to university, whatever it may be. And that means teachers too are also off. So there's so much time we have on our hands. Many people, especially nowadays, they can't travel much. So there's not many people who are on holiday. So many people would not have gone abroad. They're still here. This is just the United Kingdom. Uh, other places too, I'm sure, uh, and across the world. But I'm not too sure about those. So subhanAllah, whoever is at home, they're at home. And what they have on their hands is time. You know, throughout the year, oh, I don't have time. I need to do this. I come back from school and there's not enough time. You know, we're always worrying about time. Always worrying. And now we've suddenly just got so much of it. Allahu Akbar. We've suddenly got so much of it and either we don't know what to do with it or as people say we waste it. But then the question arises, do we waste time or does time waste us? That's the question, my dear viewers. Are you wasting time or is time wasting you? Subhanallah, your time is limited. Your time is limited. There was a time when you came to this world. And there shall be a time when you leave this world, when you die, when you pass away. So my dear viewers, the rest of the time itself is going to continue for the people coming after us until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes. But my dear viewers, our time is limited. Are we wasting time or is time wasting us? Allahu Akbar. It's said, and this is beautiful, that there's this person, and you have people like this. Honestly, I've heard somebody approach me and say the same. This, suddenly, we, we, we do have people like this. There's a person who came, and he came to a Hakim. A Hakim is, uh, literally means a person with wisdom, is used for a, um, to refer to a herbalist. A person who, they use natural plants, etc., to cure people, to aid people, uh, to help people. So he came to a herbalist and he states and he said that a person came to a herbalist and he said that describe the benefits of anything, meaning prescribe any medicine, give me some sort of medicine which shall allow me to sleep even during the day. So prescribe 
for me some sort of medicine, meaning give me something which will allow me to sleep even during the day. Some people will be thinking that's strange. Other people will be thinking, oh wow, I'm interested. What is this medicine? I think I'll have to get some too. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> but if you use on the channel, so one person he asks a Hakim, says, give me some medicine which will allow me to sleep even during the daytime. And what is the solution, the answer the Hakim gives? What medicine does he brew up? Allahu Akbar, the Hakim, he replies. He says, oh you, how much of an unwise person he truly is. He despises him. Rather than giving him some, you know, he's come for some medicine. Rather than giving him the medicine, he's, he's speaking to him like this. He says, how unwise you are. You are already spending half of your life sleeping. And you wish you're spending half of your life, you are already sleeping. And sleep itself is the sister of death. And now you wish to waste more of your time sleeping. Sleep is the sister of death. Allahu Akbar. The man says, how? What do you mean spending half of my life sleeping? How am I spending half of my life sleeping? And how am I going to be, you know, sleeping for possibly two thirds of my life? The person says, the Hakim, the herbalist, he says, he's a wise man too, he says, suppose you live for 40 years. If you live for 40 years, then half of this is 20 years. Half of this is 20 years. Now you should be asking to reduce it to, let's just say, 10 years. But if you live to be 40 years, if you are 40 years old, you've been sleeping throughout the nights, which is most of the time, let's just say, half of an entire day, 24 hour period. You've been sleeping for half of your entire day, which means you've been sleeping for half of your entire life. So if you've been living, if you have been alive, you are 40 years of age, then this would mean that you've been sleeping for about 20 years. If we are to truly think about it, then yes, those people, and there are many people out there who still, they sleep for 12 hours. They sleep for 12 hours. Now, if you are sleeping for, firstly, just this itself is just a big problem. If you are sleeping for 12 hours, you're a 40 year old, then think about it, really, are you really, this is just something to think about. Yes, I'm not dying at 40 years old. But are you really 40 years old? Have you lived life for 40 years? This is a question we must ask those who are 30 years old. Have we lived life for 30 years? Maybe most of 30 years, have we? How much have we been sleeping? This is the first question of sleep, my dear viewers. Because we sleep so much. Now, how much should we sleep? Uh, nowadays, there is a bit of a craze, isn't there? Where, oh yes, we need to sleep less. And that's good. But it shouldn't be too less, where it becomes problematic. Because sleep is something that we do need. As for why, Allahu Alam. But everybody agrees and knows that yes, we need to sleep. And there's different hours given. Some would say six or seven. Most say seven or eight hours at least. But maximum eight hours. Maximum is eight hours. Do not sleep for more than eight hours. What we must ask ourselves is, how many hours do we sleep for? And then this leads to another problem. This leads to another problem. What is this? I mean, you say, oh yes, but I didn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. So let's just say they got into bed at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. You can read the Isha um, about half past 10, maybe Jamaat, maybe. Depending on where you are, it'll be different times. So let's just say somebody goes to sleep. Let's just say even 10 o'clock. Let's just say somebody goes to sleep as the majority of the year, 10 o'clock, 
for many. Uh, many youngsters will be sleeping eight o'clock. They should be sleeping eight, nine o'clock. But remember, salah, everything should evolve around salah. This is really, really important. Let's just say, just for the sake of it, a person goes to sleep at 10 o'clock. And the next morning they wake up at 10 o'clock, or maybe 11 o'clock, or 12 o'clock. Yes, this really does happen. And they'll be like, you've, you've woken up so late. And they'll say, yes, but I couldn't really sleep at night. I couldn't really sleep at night. Why couldn't they sleep at night? Either because they were on their phone, and then when you get off your phone, it, it takes you some time before you're able to fall asleep. This could be one of the reasons. Another, they're just thinking, thinking, thinking. And they've got all sorts of things on their mind. Or they've just finished watching a movie, Mazallah. And yes, after having been exposed to some sort of a screen, my dear viewers, this does affect our sleep. We're not able to uh, immediately fall asleep. And even the sleep we do have. Now there's a sleep and then there's another which is considered a deep sleep. It said that majority of the people, they lack deep sleep. Meaning when you go to sleep and you truly have that, you know, you make the most of that. Let's sometimes say, oh, wow, I had the best sleep ever last night. We don't really experience this much. Why? Again, because we have been exposed to screens. So for those who have their children always watching the screen, even right now, those who have their children watching the screen, especially before they go to bed. So it said about two hours at least before bed, you shouldn't expose yourself to screens. And I can say I, I do that. Uh, although I do sometimes try to, you know, delay as much as possible between uh, when I've used my phone and when I'm going to sleep. Or nowadays you can even have night modes, etc. But my dear views of the we should try to be less exposed to any sort of screen, especially before going to sleep. So the problem is it is our own fault that we're not getting good sleep. It is our own fault. Either we are on our phone, put your phones away. We've been watching the television uh, before going to sleep. This too affects our sleep. So these are things we need to th uh, think of. We need to watch over. How are we having our proper meals? And our sleep, my dear viewers and children, when we do go to sleep, we should sleep properly. It should be a proper sleep, not going to bed. And then now we have another uh, television in our bedroom too. I think this is one of the worst things a person can do. Having a television in your bedroom is one of the worst choices you can make. It's one of the worst choices a person can make. Honestly, I would personally, this is my personal uh, recommendation. You never should keep a television in your bedroom. No, if you wish to watch the telly, um, downstairs, you know, most people have a television. And remember this, when I speak about television and all these things, um, it doesn't mean we are permitted whatsoever to watch anything haram on television, no. Remember, those things which are haram, which are impermissible to watch, we must refrain from those. And Alhamdulillah, yes, there are channels, or there is a channel, shall I say, more specifically, which is completely free uh, from anything which is wrong, from anything which is bad. Alhamdulillah, this is a Madani channel, which is completely in conformity with the Quran and the Sharia. Alhamdulillah. So when you are watching TV, you should only watch Madani channel. But I would say, don't watch it till late. So before you are going to sleep, we should have this time in between. You know, when you're possibly having your meal, spend some time with your kids, if you have any, with your nieces, nephews, uh, before going to sleep. So the point I'm trying to get at is, we spend too much time sleeping. We spend too much time sleeping. Some people sleep up until about 12 hours a day. Honestly, it's shocking. Yes, for kids it's fine. Youngsters, they should sleep about 12 uh, hours or so. I think uh, toddlers, those who are just before the age of teenagers. But when you become teenagers, 14, 15, let's just say, um, then you should sleep less at nine, 10 hours possibly. And when you're about 17, 18, eight hours maximum. After that, you should not sleep. And this is a huge problem because most of our time is taken there sleeping. If you are 40 years of age, you've been sleeping for 12 hours every day. You truly are only 20 years. You've only spent 20 years doing things. 
much of that time is eating, much of that time is, you know, possibly even cleansing yourself in the shower, how much time? If you were to add everything up, I'm referring to uh, your salah, which is a good thing. Your salah, hopefully, which is a good thing. Worship, which is a good thing. And much of it in education too. So this is another question we must ask. When we go, when we seek knowledge, when we go to school, how much do we actually learn? One thing you need to keep in mind every day you do go to school is, I've come from home. I'm spending six or so hours here. So if school begins about nine-ish, you can say nine. So we have 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. So about six hours. So yes, all six hours are not spent uh, in class. So you may have an hour for lunch. You may have half an hour, 20 minutes break time too. I remember it used to be 20 minutes when I was at school. So you may have break time too, my dear viewers. But you still are spending how many six hours there? On the way to school, on the way back. So much traffic, about another hour, seven hours. You need to ask yourself, I've come here seven hours of my life, just for this day this is, seven hours are going to be spent. Think about it. What am I going to attain with these seven hours? What have I attained? At the end of school, you know, parents should ask this too. It's been seven hours. Think about it. Seven hours is a long time. Imagine you asking a kid to just sit there, sit there in the corner. And he'll be like, after five minutes, like, can I get up now? No, you have, to, you have to stay sitting. You have to, you must sit there. Ten minutes have gone. Oh, it's been, how long has it been? It seems like it's been half an hour. Oh, it's been, it let him imagine when it's half an hour, I think an hour. It's, it's like I've been here all day. Look how much time that is. Your time is valuable. Your time is valuable. So when parents go to school to pick up their children, they bring them, them back home, they should say to them, you have spent about seven hours, or let's just say five hours of education. Five hours of education. You have spent, or you have spent five or so hours here at school. Tell me, what did you learn today? What did you learn today? And for five hours, we really must ask ourselves, what did we learn today? Five hours spent at school. For those who are going to the masjid, they've spent one hour. Nowadays it's one hour. I remember it used to be about two hours. Five to seven used to be the timing, my dear viewers. It used to be about two hours. Nowadays, most people do about one hour. Okay, you've spent an hour there. Tell me what you learned at the madrasa. Here you've spent this much time. How much have you made of this much time? We need to start questioning ourselves. We need to start questioning our children. That this is the time you have. What did you do with this time? Now, if you give your children money, if I was to give my child, how much is a good amount? Allahu alam, I don't know. Um, let's just say five pounds. Dinner money. Five pounds. I said, here you go, you're going to school today. Here's five pounds. You have five pounds dinner money. And or let's just leave, leave five pounds. Let's just say I was to give my child 20 pounds. And he was going with his friends, possibly. Now, when he goes with his friends and he returns, and you would ask that child, what did you do with this 20 pounds? You had 20 pounds, how did you spend it? Now, the way that child spent it, you feel the loss. So if it's on food, you think, oh yeah, that's fine, no problem. If it's on game, you think, oh maybe, you know, the child is, you know, he was having some fun. That's the whole point of it. If he lost it, then you think, oh, you lost 10 pounds. You feel that loss. Oh, I've lost 10 pounds. Some people won't be bothered. Let's just say it's 100 pounds. You've lost 100 pounds. I've lost 100 pounds. You feel this loss, don't you? My dear viewers of Mandarin Channel, time is more valuable than money. Time is more valuable than money. Money is something which we could get more of. We could earn more. Time is something when you've lost it, you can't gain no more. That's it. We have our limited time. We can't gain more time. So when we lose money, then we feel the loss. 
And yes, because it's tangible, we feel it much more. But time is even more valuable than money. So when we are losing time, or as we say, when we are wasting time, then we don't feel the loss. Why don't we feel the loss? We should feel that loss. If you've lost a hundred pounds, a thousand pounds, you think, oh, damn it, I've lost a thousand pounds. Whereas if we've wasted an hour, we don't think, oh, I've waited. watching a movie, movies are about one or two hours, between about one or two hours. Now, if you think about it, really, my dear viewers, that movie was a waste of one or two hours. Yes, whilst you're there, you're possibly a bit excited. You know, I was watching a movie, this is what happened. But tell me, what did you actually gain from this movie? So this is a loss for one hour, for two hours. Allahu Akbar. My dear of Allah, let's move to our daily reminder. And then inshallah, we shall continue with our topic. Time is valuable, my dear viewers. And we must value our time. Let's go to the daily reminder. Sallu alil habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. Sallu alil habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam. Sheikh Sayyiduna Abu Sa'id Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu has narrated. When a person wakes up in the morning, all his body parts request the tongue. They say, fear Allah Azza wa Jal in our matter, because we are associated with you. If you remain straight, then we will too remain straight. But if you are crooked, then we will too be crooked. A renowned commentator, a great thinker of the Ummah, Mufti Ahmed Yar Khan rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, has stated while explaining this blessed hadith, O oh tongue, we are associated with you in the benefit and loss, relief and comfort, and suffering and distress. If you will act wrongfully, we will get into trouble. If you will act rightly, we will be respected. Keep in mind that the tongue reflects the state of the heart. It is goodness and badness that shows the goodness and badness of the heart. Dear viewers at Monday Channel, at times, using tongue carelessly indeed causes serious troubles. And if someone uses this tongue to scold a Muslim without any shari reason and it hurts his feelings, then indeed it is a sin and leads towards hell. It is narrated in the book of Tabrani that the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said, he who has hurt a Muslim without any shari reason has hurt me and he who has hurt me has displeased Allah azza wa jal. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Mother Nation channel, Alhamdulillahi Azza wa Jal. Uh, you are watching Rise and Shine. That was our daily reminder. MashaAllah. Um, we are speaking about time, my dear viewers. It said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated that the blessed mother of Hazrat Sayyidina Sulaiman ibn Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam, the meaning the great prophet Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, his beloved mother had said, that, oh my son, do not sleep too much at night. For sleeping too much at night will leave a man poor on the day of judgment. Now this is beautiful because why we think the night is for sleep? Yes, the night is for sleep. And remember the type of sleep you get in the night, it, it's, you know, it can't be made up for in the day. It can't be made up for in the day. Some people, what they do is, oh, I didn't get sleep uh, during the night. Try to sleep in the night as much as possible. By the way, and, and I need to reword my word. I need to reword that. Now, whenever you do sleep, try and make the most of it during the night time. Whenever you do sleep. But it doesn't mean we should spend our entire night sleeping. Why? Because Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. 
And as we said, Alhamdulillah, we have this love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Loving Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to show this or what true love is, is following the sunnahs of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to spend many times, entire nights, worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But he would spend every night, every single night, he would be worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He would be praying his swara. So much so that his feet, the blessed feet of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam would, you can say, swell. He would move from one foot to another foot. This is what happens when one of our, of our feet are hurting. What do we do? We'll move slightly towards, we'll lean towards the left one. Let's just say the right foot's hurting. we we'll lean towards the left one. The left one's hurting, we'll lean towards the right one. Now, my David was Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the greatest of all people, the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa taala. He would spend his nights worshiping Allah subhanahu wa taala. Who are we not to spend our nights worshiping Allah? And this is something which is very rare, and it's something we need to adopt. It's the best of things to wake up in the morning and just worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It honestly is the best. Why? Because during the day, there's, there's so many things you have in your head. Let's just say I'm reading my Zuhr Salah today. No, it's not Zuhr Salah time right now, but when the time comes, let's just say it's time for Zuhr Salah. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm reading my Zuhr Salah, let's just say. But my mind is not completely free. We should be. And yes, that's the best way of praying Salah. But there's always something there, isn't there? Or, okay, after Salah, I need to go here. Or maybe, maybe even if it's just noise around us. Maybe if we're reading at our homes, there's the noise of children, uh, their mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, parents, whoever may be at home, talking, about, it could be anything. If we're reading at home, this is what may be happening. If we're reading in the masjid, there's still other people, people walking in the masjid, people leaving the masjid. There's still, there's always something on our mind whilst you're reading during the day. Even if there's nobody at home, maybe we're hearing kids playing in the street. Whereas, if you are to be worshipping in the middle of the night, and many, you could say, in a way, celebrities, people who are um, champions, world champions, in, you know, whether it be, um, well, all sorts of skills, whatever it may be. Now, Many of the greatest champions, what do they do? They'll train in the middle of the night. And some say that I'd rather train at night than train during the day because I know the whole world is asleep and I'm training. My dear viewers, as Muslims, we should have this mindset. We should have this mindset of worshipping in the middle of the night. Because there is so much ease Honestly, and we enjoy it more too. There's, do you know that peace and tranquility which we search for, which we uh, desire and wish for? We could find this in the night. When you wake up in the middle of the night, nobody else is awake, possibly even in your house nobody's awake. Everybody's sleeping. You're not going to hear the noise of any kids in the street. There's nothing. You don't have any worry on your mind. Or, you know, task, or after salah, I need to do this. Or I need to call somebody. Somebody's called me. You have none of that. Who calls you in the middle of the night? Unless it's an emergency. Who will call you in the middle of the night? So now it's just between you. It's just between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are going to possibly open the Quran, whatever it may be. This is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where that, and this is how we should consider sleep, by the way. And honestly, it really does this so much good. When you consider sleep to be a waste of time, meaning sleeping extra. So let's just say you have seven hours of sleep. Or let's just say eight hours. Try to sleep eight hours. Let's just say you have eight hours of sleep. Now, anything more than this, you're like, oh, damn it, I've wasted my time. Think of it like this. And this will help you because this person has helped me so much, honestly. Where I think as soon as I wake up, you know, I'm up, I'm happy, I'm loving it. So my dear was when you wake up, um, anything more than eight hours, if you consider it a waste of time, you wouldn't be in bed.
you wouldn't need somebody to grip your eye, but you think, what am I doing in bed? Okay, sometimes, yes, you remain in bed. So, for example, it may be in the morning. It may be I wake up early sometimes, earlier than even before my alarm, many times. I wake up much earlier. Now, if I'm feeling still really tired and something woke me up, okay, go back to sleep. That's fine. I've not had eight hours. But let's just say I've woken up. I know I've had my eight hours, seven hours of sleep. And that's enough for me. With everybody, it's different. You should try having a minimum of about seven hours. But for everyone, it's different. Some need not. I need eight hours. Some need nine hours. Sometimes if it is a need nine hours, many times you don't need, you just think you need it. It's not a need. Some people think they need nine hours, but they don't need it. So try eight hours. Let's see if you can go by your day. Or slowly decrease it. So once your eight hours have gone, Okay, I want to stay in bed, possibly because it's cold, possibly because I don't have to get up. There's nothing I've got to do. So sometimes this, I do this too, where I'll wake up and I'll open a book and read it. Uh, in the morning, first thing in the morning. And remember, first thing in the morning, the wavelengths, um, the way your brain works is much, as you, you can say, sharper, much better. You're much more able to retain the information you take in. The first 20 minutes upon having woken up or woken, the first 20 minutes of your day is when your brain it is at its peak for you to take in information, for you to retain, remember, learn, understand things. So we should make the most, especially of the first few minutes when we do awaken. We're speaking about many things, my dear viewers. Let's move to the daily hadith, Sharif. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sayyidun Abu Huraira radiallahu an states that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man tamassaka bi sunnati inda fasadi ummati falahu ajru mi'ati shaheedin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever holds firmly onto my sunnah at the time of corruption in my ummah, then for him is the reward of 100 martyrs. This hadith is mentioned in Mishkatul Masabih. What is the sharh, the commentary? The ulama have said that fasadi ummati, the time of corruption in my ummah, refers to the time when the sunnah is abandoned or there is a lack of amal upon the sunnah of the Prophet And as for the wordings, a hundred martyrs, this indicates towards the fact that acting upon the sunnah at that time will be a great struggle, very difficult but its reward will be immense. We know the reward of a martyr, subhanallah. Before his blood, the drop of blood falls on the floor, he sees his place in Jannah. There are so many ahadith in regards to the fadail of a shaheed. But why does it say 100 martyrs in this hadith? The ulama state that the reason why the Prophet ﷺ said, ajru mi'ati shaheedin, is because a shaheed, he goes through struggle, no doubt. Great difficulty and hardship, and then he tastes martyrdom. But it's only once. As for the one who acts upon the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, at that time, he will have to go through difficulty again and again. If he keeps the beard, for example, uses the miswak sharif, grows his hair long in accordance to the sunnah, then people will look at him and they will say things about him. They will discourage him. They will dishearten him. So again and again, he's having to face this hardship. They are disheartening him. They are making him feel down. So this is why he will gain the reward of a hundred martyrs because time and time again he has to struggle all his life until his last breath. He will hear people say wrong things about him. Oh, he is a religious person now. Oh, uh, you're too young to keep a beard. Sometimes Ma'adullah, even the own relatives, parents, siblings are the ones to discourage. So this is why the reward of a hundred martyrs has been promised for that person who acts upon the sunnah, who clings firmly to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, at the time of fasad, corruption, when people have left the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to cling on to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah.
صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله وسلم ما شاء الله هذا was our respected hafiz kalim madani sahib we did have our daily question what was our daily question the question was hazrat umar ibn khattab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu the second khalifa of islam for how long did he rule as the caliph for how many years medieval was did he rule as the caliph there were four options option number 1 was it 3 years option number 2 was it 5 years option number 3 was it 7 years or option number 4 uh, 10 years which is the correct answer and medieval was the result the correct answer is uh, option number 4 so Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab radhiyallahu anhu the second khalifa of Islam he ruled for approximately 10 years option number 4 is the correct answer if he was as we said yes time is of the essence uh, we need to make the most of our time we need to really really honestly this is not just me one is just saying and everybody possibly tells you this yeah we should make use of our time but then that's it many times we don't even know what to do with our time many a times we don't know what to do with our time we really need to have something a plan speak to somebody speak to a scholar first you should give and this is another thing priorities we need to understand what to prioritize um, those things which have a greater importance should be given more of a priority so for example salah our time table again time our time table should evolve around our daily salah so we should pray our daily salah and whatever we are doing we should have salah in mind so okay i need to do this should i do it before salah should i do it after salah it's not during salah no it's not missing salah no it's okay the last round about asr time so okay then i could read asr salah this time and then we'll do this or maybe if we for jamaat for those who must go and read with jamaat you may think a oh, jamaat is at this time how can i work my way around it so everything should be evolving around our salah this is the most important thing that's all for now we we'll say as much salawat um, upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as possible so allu ala alhabib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam by the grace of allah by the grace of allah even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise and shine and the sun